There's nothing quite like nature to stir our souls, calm our nerves, and ease our minds. Jim and Kathy Serretta share a lifelong love for the outdoors. On an early morning walk near their North Phoenix home, they take time to appreciate wildlife. You can tell it's morning feeding time. Ducks and other waterfowl have a special place in their hearts. Now those are all uh, green winged teal. It's just a beautiful morning. So here we are enjoying the birds. Nothing man-made comes close to capturing the essence of these splendid creatures. But that doesn't stop Jim from trying, and for quite some time his attempts have been making a splash. Well, I uh, like working with wood, and I carve duck decoys. You know, I've uh, been doing this since about 1978. So however many years that it is, and it's been a ball. Okay. I go down to the lumber yard and pick out just the wood I want. Make that first cut through the wood. And this wonderful smell comes out of the wood. The smell of the sugar pine is just wonderful. I use sugar pine. It's just so fragrant. It's just lovely. So he'd be working in the garage in his shop and whittling and uh, carving and that type of thing. And he'd walk in the house and it's just, he smelled so good. <laughs> working with sugar pine couldn't be more appropriate for Jim Serretta. After all, he's had a pretty sweet life, much of it spent making candy at the family-owned Soretta Candy Company in downtown Glendale. You know what, we all have friends that are doctors and lawyers, but nobody really wants to see those guys, but they all want to see the candy man. So yeah, it's been fun my entire life. Well, I don't know about you, but <laughs> that's what we start with. Let's go, uh, Use a draw knife. I use all hand tools. And I'm going to use a draw knife to, re to remove big chunks of uh, wood on the body, rough shape it, just big chunks flying off this thing. Every flake that falls to the floor brings Jim a little closer to the outdoors and memories of time with family and friends watching and waiting for ducks to drop in on his decoys. You don't even have to shoot them. It's just fun to see the birds come and go, and we've done that many times. So it, the whole process is a continuation of the outdoors into our, uh, my workshop here and making a duck decoy. And now we can start working on our shape even better and better. We're trying to release a duck that is trapped in this wood. It's just a little bit uh, argumentative at times, but we're getting there. And at this point, we're removing a lot of wood and getting rid of all the, all the little flat spots, a uh, little piece of wood that kind of pokes up, says, I ah, really shouldn't be here. Using files and rasps, Jim continues to shape the sugar pine. He won't be satisfied until every curve and every angle form the perfect swimming pintail. Very, very true to the shape of the duck. Uh, very true to the paint pattern. The paint pattern's got to be right on. And that's one of the things I enjoy because uh, when they're out there on the water and a duck flies in, uh, they're kind of hard to tell apart actually, except for one's moving a lot more than one of my wooden blocks. So I enjoy getting them true to character. These are some of his classic renditions of waterfowl. As good as they look, they don't sound like much, but Jim has that covered. So this is one of my hand-carved duck calls, and they sound like this. 
he does teal and widgeon and um, mallards, of course, and they all have the sound indigenous to that species. Boy, they're flying close today. <laughs> I like to stipple a little bit. It gives it such a nice, uh, natural, soft, downy look to the, uh, the paint. During the 80s and 90s, Jim entered his decoys in carving competitions from coast to coast. Not in the decorative categories. Those are for decoys most at home in a museum. Jim's birds are meant to be outside, which is why he always entered the service class. He always entered the working class decoy and took numerous first ribbons, numerous ribbons in general. I think of him as an artist. I do. Yes, I do. I don't know that he thinks of himself as an artist, but I think that he's an amazing artist. I, I, I see my end product and it looks great. I enjoy the ducks. Uh, uh, I guess you could call me an artist. I look at me as uh, just a guy that just likes to hunt and fish and make duck decoys. Okay. You know, over the years, I've had a lot of people request duck decoys from me. I always requested, take the bird out, get his feet wet. If you didn't do that, you didn't do the right thing. Because the fun part about a duck decoy is to get it wet. They say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. For Jim Serretta and his wife Kathy, imitation has always been something that's brought them just a little bit closer to the real thing. It's just really been a great enrichment in our lives. We've got birds up there, look at the birds up there. 